You're now tuned into Kofi's Universe since you're just sitting on Uranus. This is the number one YouTube channel for hip hop culture news, informed black social issues, song reaction videos, and even comedy. So be sure to like this post. And if you haven't already subscribed, do so right about now. Razzcast. YouTube salute. Biggie Smalls was apparently preparing to leave Bad Boy Records and Diddy behind in the months preceding his tragic death in 1997, according to a new report from Rolling Stone. If you're new to my channel, thumbs up the video, hit that sub button, click that bell icon to be notified when I upload new content and go live. So the outlet explained the situation as part of a broader investigation to Diddy amid the numerous allegations the label's founder is facing Biggie's lawyers were allegedly focused on getting back his publishing rights at the time. All right, so we're going to dive into this, y'all. Says, where's it at? Okay. I will never give it up until I'm dead and my home, excuse me, my bones are crushed into powder. Diddy told the lawyers, according to the big payback, the history of the business of hip hop, as noted by Rolling Stone. Hip hop photographer Monique Bunn further confirmed the rumor, adding Biggie was absolutely about to leave Puff. I know for a fact because he told me that. Another source told the outlet everybody wanted to leave Puffy. Everybody leaves him. If you think about it, y'all, who else wanted to leave Puff? Think about it. The locks, they end up leaving, right? Remember? Because Puff was tripping about the um their deal and they wanted their they wanted their um it wasn't their masters yet, right? It, they wanted off the label. They wanted them off the label to go to Rough Riders. There's other artists that didn't want to be on Bad Boy no more. I think Craig Mack too. But I think Craig Mack, he felt like he was getting um, you know what over. F over. So Rolling Stone also uncovered a new allegation in their investigation with stems from Diddy's time at Howard University. Citing a friend of his college girlfriend, they reported on an alleged incident outside of one of the dorm buildings. The friend claimed Diddy showed up um, belligerent and screamed and hollered and act a stone fool until she, the girlfriend, came downstairs. When she did, Diddy allegedly used a belt to hit her all over the place. The outlet spoke with the multiple other alleged witnesses of the incident as well. So we go to the next part. So in response to Rolling Stone's piece, Diddy's lawyer, Jonathan Davis, said that his client cannot address every allegation picked up by the press from my source, no matter how unreliable. Be on the lookout for further updates on Diddy, y'all. So how do I feel about this, y'all? I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all because at the end of the day, Biggie, he was going to um, release his final album on Bad Boy that was going to come out like in 1998 or 9, and it was going to be um, titled The Black Album. Yes, that's where Jay-Z got his album um, titled from in 2003, The Black Album. But this was going to be a black cover with no track listing. That's what Biggie already talked about. A lot of people don't realize that. So that was going to be his final album on Bad Boy Records. So um, Diddy already knew that Biggie was, you know, the main source of the income on Bad Boy Records. Yes, you got Mace. You got Craig Mack at the time. You had the locks. But come on, who was who had the um, radio hits? Biggie. Who was going multi-platinum? Biggie. If Biggie jumped on your remix, you was going platinum. So if you take away your main franchise player, you ain't going to make no hits like that no more. You might, you, you still go go. You might go plot them here and there, but the hits not going to actually, you know, be number one on the billboard charts. You're not going to probably have 20,000 spins um, a week on the radio. This is, I'm talking about in the 90s, 2000s. So we already knew what Biggie was bringing to the table. So Biggie probably already knew. No, F that. I'm going to go over here. Because you already had Julia Mafia as far as the people he wanted to work with, you know. And I remember even the locks, they got into it with Puffy. This is the, I think it was the week, the week of, the week Biggie was murdered in L.A. And Biggie was trying to tell them to, you know, relax. Let's not talk about that right now because 
They really didn't want to mess with Diddy too much. The locks. They kind of wanted to just go away and do some other stuff. Like, man, forget this stuff. So the locks was already feeling some type of some type of way towards Diddy when they was at Bad Boy Records. But at the same time, though, when Biggie passed away, things started to actually, you know, kind of show who he really was. And he's done this to every artist. There ain't no artist out there that can say, oh, Big Diddy did this for me. Nah. Biggie, man, he's not here to speak for himself. But it's just sad that how Puffy feel, though. But that's what I said. These record labels don't care. All they care about is you putting out that record, making that album, making them some money. You shutting the F up. Post your comments below. Hulk smash Black Panther the like button. Subscribe to my channel. Click the bell icon to be notified when I upload new content and go live. If you want to support, donate to the channel. I have Patreon. Patreon.com slash Kofi Universe. Demo, cash out, PayPal, stream apps, everything's in the description. Until next time, salute.